So Apple just released the iOS 14.7 release candidate. So that basically means that as long as there are no showstoppers found between now and next week, then the public version of iOS 14.7 will be released then. Here's a look at what's new. So without a doubt, the biggest feature to come to 14.7 is support for Apple's just announced MagSafe battery pack. And this battery pack will attach to your iPhone 12 via MagSafe and it looks like this. So as you can see, the MagSafe battery pack comes in a white color. It attaches to the back of your iPhone 12 using the magnetic auto aligning MagSafe connection. So you'll be able to recharge your iPhone without connecting any sort of wires with up to five watts of power. So it's not gonna be super fast, but it'll get the job done and recharge your iPhone, top it off, and keep your iPhone running when it's running low on battery. So here is the rear of the MagSafe power pack. So here's what it looks like on the iPhone 12, both the iPhone 12 mini and the regular iPhone 12. You can see it, it fits perfectly on the iPhone 12 mini. I think a lot of mini fans are gonna really enjoy having this because let's be honest, the battery life is the worst part of the iPhone 12 mini. You can see it also works on the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. So the genius thing about this design is that you have one battery pack that works across all of the MagSafe enabled iPhones because it just simply attaches to the rear. Now this is the only officially certified MagSafe battery pack. So with it, you get special lock screen status information pertaining to the battery pack. You also get an updated batteries widget that displays the battery pack details. And you can add that widget to your home screen or to the today view. But there are other details about this battery pack that are very interesting. Now obviously because it uses MagSafe, it auto aligns to your iPhone 12 for wireless charging, no wires necessary. And like previous battery cases from Apple, it automatically charges. So there's no need to turn it on or off. There's no power button to manage it. You just connect it and it just starts working. That's always been a really cool characteristic of the first party Apple battery packs. But what if you're at home and you need to recharge your battery pack? Well, you simply plug a lightning cable directly into the MagSafe battery pack. Apple doesn't show it in the marketing materials, but there definitely is a lightning input directly on the MagSafe battery pack. And when connected to your iPhone, your iPhone will recharge wirelessly at up to 15 watts. So this way you're using the MagSafe battery pack like a MagSafe wireless charger that you would use on your desktop. Now the MagSafe battery pack calls for a, at least a 20 watt power adapter, but if you use a higher than 20 watt power adapter, you can charge both your MagSafe battery pack and your iPhone at the same time, even faster. So the first time you get your MagSafe battery pack and you unbox it, you wanna fully charge it using a lightning to USB cable and a 20 watt or higher power adapter. And the battery pack has a status light that turns amber when it's charging and that same light will briefly turn green once fully charged. And again, you can check the status of your charging via the lock screen information that appears or via the today view or on the home screen using the batteries widget. And like I showed you earlier, 14.7 has that specially designed MagSafe power pack glyph. So here's another look at the batteries widgets with the updated glyph. And of course, in our full review of the MagSafe battery pack, we'll have a full walkthrough of everything. But here is perhaps the most interesting thing about the MagSafe battery pack, and that is what seems to be reverse charging support. So the first sentence in this support document shows how you would charge both your iPhone and the battery pack simultaneously by connecting the MagSafe battery pack to your iPhone and then plugging the power adapter directly into the MagSafe battery pack. Simple, straightforward, right? But notice the second sentence, and this is the real exciting thing. It says you can also charge both if you attach your MagSafe battery pack to your iPhone, then plug your iPhone into a power source. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, say you were syncing photos or say you were connected to a wired CarPlay setup that charges your phone, right? But of course, in able to use CarPlay with such a setup, you would have to plug in directly to your iPhone. Well, according to this document, your MagSafe battery pack would still charge even though you don't have the lightning cable connected directly to the MagSafe battery pack. In other words, your iPhone would be recharging the battery pack via its wireless connection, AKA reverse charging. 
So let's pretend that my AirPods wireless charging case is the MagSafe power pack and you can see how that would work. I have my iPhone plugged in and connected to the lightning cable, which goes to a power adapter. And then the iPhone via the wireless charger feeds power back to the accessory instead of the other way around. So that would allow me to recharge the power pack and my iPhone simultaneously. And then maybe in the future, Apple will enable the ability to reverse charge a pair of AirPods. Wouldn't that be handy? And there are other details that we're gonna discuss. Uh, like I said, in our full review of the MagSafe battery pack, we'll walk through all the ins and outs for you. Let me know down below if you wanna see that review. But of course, 14.7 isn't all about the MagSafe battery pack. It's also about the HomePod and more specifically, the addition of HomePod timer support for the Home app. I've showed you this before in depth in some of our other videos, but we'll briefly walk through it right now. So here's our HomePod mini, and I have my iPhone running 14.7 in the Home app. You can see there the software update. 14.7 allows users to manage timers directly from the Home app on iPhone and iPad. So we'll go ahead and update our HomePod to version 14.7, and that'll just take a few minutes. And once that's fully updated, now you'll see the new timers functionality within the home app. So if we go to our accessory or HomePod mini, I'm gonna just scroll down there. In addition to alarms, you now see, look what we have there, timers. So you can add a timer from the device itself or vice versa. So I'm gonna add one directly from our HomePod mini, create a five minute dog walking timer. And notice what happens right there on our iPhone, it adds it and immediately starts counting down. I can pause it, I can exit out to clear that timer altogether if I want to. Let's cancel it, cancel my dog walking timer. And it disappears just like that. Now let's add another, but we'll do so manually this time. Just tap new timer, give it a label, just call it dog walking, so we'll add that one back. So we'll make old Rover very happy with our 30 minute walk. So we'll set it to 30 minutes, you can also set hours in seconds as well. And now I have that saved and I can reference that directly from my HomePod. Let's add another timer, create a five minute hot dog timer. And there we go. So there's our hot dog timer, it's counting down and notice it appears above because it is a shorter timer than the dog walking timer. Let's add another, add a 60 minute roast timer. And there we go. So there's our roast cooking right now and all our timers are in chronological order. So I'm going to cancel all timers. It's going to ask me if I'm, I'm sure. And yes, I am sure. And the timers will go away just like that. Super handy, nifty feature to have on 14.7. And in 14.7, you get air quality info in the maps and weather app for Canada, for France, for Italy, for the Netherlands, for Spain, and last but not least, for South Korea as well. And at 14.7, the podcast app in your library allows you to see all shows or only the shows you follow. So you'll see a little tab at the top, followed or all. So followed are only the shows you specifically choose to follow, AKA subscribe, and all are all the shows you're actually actively listening to. So even if you don't subscribe, but you're listening to it, it'll appear in all. And then finally in 14.7, support for Apple Card family combined limits and co-owner accounts goes live. Now all those other features are well and good. I appreciate having the timer support in the whole map. I appreciate the air quality alerts and all that. That's great, right? But obviously the big feature here, the big surprise this go round is support for the upcoming $99 MagSafe battery pack launches next week alongside iOS 14.7. It's actually available for purchase right now, but it won't actually arrive to customers until next week, probably Monday or Tuesday-ish. Personally, I have always been a fan of Apple's battery products. I love the smart battery case. I know that was extremely polarizing. This one seems a little less polarizing because it literally just attaches to the back of your iPhone and it can be easily attached and removed thanks to those handy magnets. And I'm really looking forward to testing this little thing out because uh, I wanna see how well it performs battery-wise, how far and how fast will it recharge my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Will it actually make the iPhone 12 mini more comfortable to hold in hand with that little bump on the back? 
I don't know. There's a lot of things we want to figure out here. And the only way we're going to figure them out is by testing it ourselves. So I'm looking forward to going hands on with this. Let me know though, have you already purchased the MagSafe battery pack? Do you plan on doing so? Let me know down below in the comment section. What else do you think about iOS 14.7? Share your thoughts down below in the comment section and be sure to thumbs up if you appreciated this video and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with the 9to5Mac.